This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, this podcast is safe for first-time readers because it's made by me, a first-time reader. I'm your host, Danny, and I'm the one who's taken on the task of reading through this 15-book mega series. I'm joined by my co-host, Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. Before we get into our episode today, we want to recognize and welcome Todd Shoemaker and Soonmi Edwunmi to the Wheel Waves Patreon team, and recognize Scott Terrio, who increased his pledge. We also want to recognize and say hey to everyone who is listening around the world in 38 different countries. So this episode, we're going to be talking about chapters 11 and 12. Yeah, so we get to do another double chapter episode. Yeah, yahoo! Yeah, and it's all about Terran and Fairy. Yes, that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want to go over a quick fun fact before we jump into the chapters here. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so sort of Wheel of Time adjacent fun fact. I wanted to talk specifically about JordanCon. Oh, nice. Yeah, JordanCon coming up in 2020. So it's an annual convention for those who don't know. I know we kind of briefly touched on it earlier, but I wanted to bring up a couple cool things about the actual convention itself because I've always had like big hopes of actually going one day. So yeah. hopefully we can make that a possibility in the future. So it's held in Atlanta, Georgia, which is kind of cool. Every and year, it's always in the same place? Yeah, so it's okay. always in Atlanta. Uh, I think the first one was somewhere else. Uh, anyways, with the Jordan Con, it's actually been going on since 2009. Yes. So it was just the 10-year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it like RJ obviously passed away in 2007. Then 2008, they announced they were doing it, the first one in 2009. So uh, just a couple things about the convention itself. The In the very first one, the guest of honor was Harriet McDougall, mm-hmm. obviously, RJ wife but the cool part about it is that they it's a non-profit and the proceeds go to the mayo clinic oh nice yeah so i I actually didn't know what the mayo clinic was before yeah that's in the states right yeah yeah so the mayo clinic is basically an academic medical center and they focus on clinical practice education research and they specialize in treating difficult cases yeah uh, of medicine and that's actually where rj got treated in 2006 Oh, okay. So I'm guessing that's a big reason why the proceeds from Jordan Con go to the Mayo Clinic. In 2019, though, the proceeds went, uh, went to the Hospice of Mercy in honor and memory of a longtime volunteer and attendee, uh, Steve Godek. Okay. Yeah. So oh, that's normally, nice. okay. Yeah, normally Mayo Center, though. You know what's funny? I only know really what Mayo Clinic is because of Grey's Anatomy. Oh, okay. Yeah, they talk about it on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, are you ready to dive into chapter 11? Yeah, I think so, because there's a ton of stuff to go over in ton, these chapters. Ton, ton, ton. So we need to get going on this. So, the road to Terran Ferry. Okay, so we have a picture of um, that full moon, like yes. that same picture. So I'm just kind of going to breeze over it. Yeah, no, we saw it twice before. Yeah, I'm less interested in the pictures. I used to think they were really cool, but now I just want to get into <laughs> the chapters. So okay, okay. So the squad has just left Emmonsfield, and Rand has spotted a drag car. Yeah, Jakar, drag car, Jakar. Okay, so this is the terrifying giant bat spy thing. Yes. Okay. Great description. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> they are all riding very hard north towards Terran Ferry. Uh, the horse that Rand is riding, his name is Cloud, and he is used to winning all the races and running faster than all the horses. Yeah. And he actually right now just wants to run even faster and Rand's trying to hold him back. Because Cloud thinks he's racing right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> he's a confused horse. A little bit. Fitting for Rand. Yeah, both confused, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so Rand's holding him back because he's... Cloud's trying to run even past Maureen and Lan. Yeah. Well, his job is usually to win races. Yeah. So right now, Rand is actually quite concerned for Egwene, who's on Bella. And so he's thinking to himself, if she falls behind, then he'll fall back too, because he doesn't want to leave her alone out here. Yeah, and he's kind of having that like offhanded thought of, oh, if, you know, Egwene is falling back, are Lan and Maureen going to just leave her behind? Yeah, exactly. And he's watching out for her, but it seems to be that Bella is really holding her own. Yeah. Yeah, she's a strong little horse. Yeah, and Rand, he's just really willing her to just keep going so he doesn't have to worry about Egwene. Yeah, he's he's hoping and praying here. Yeah. So Lan is leading everyone and slows down. And now they've reached Watch Hill. 
Yeah. So, but Rand is kind of confused because he's lost all sense of time and can't really <laughs> believe how far they've come. You know, I'm surprised that Rand is still confused, but yeah. you know. Yeah, I've had some people uh, commenting and telling me that, oh, Rand's just confused because of his lack of sleep and he hasn't eaten and all of that. Well, now he's eaten and he's slept. Yeah. He's still confused. It was a hard ride, though. <laughs> he's a little bit sore. Yeah. But yeah, so he's lost all sense of time. So they all dismount, kind of sore and tired, and the horses have run really hard and are all lathering and breathing heavy and stuff. Yeah. So Tom says that he could use a few hours rest, and Rand agrees that they might as well go on up to Watch Hill. Yeah, and they're still celebrating bell time right now there. Yes, so they hear songs and festival is happening in the village, and I'm just happy that at least there was a good bell time somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, and now we know that Beltine is not a, you know, singular Emmons Field event. No. Yeah. That's true, too. Yeah. One one kind of funny part from that first couple pages there was the fact that uh, Rand was bringing up the rear of their little train yeah. of horses. And he was thinking like, oh, he has to actually be the one to look out for if the Dragar comes. Yeah, or Trollocs or, or, or whatever. Or Trollocs or whatever, which is kind of funny because we also just learned that Lana Maureen can like sense evil. So maybe that's just in his own head. Maybe it's not. Yes. Yeah, he was thinking, I'm the one who's going to have to sound the alarm. Yeah. But it's like, eh, maybe not. Yeah. Rant. Or well, rant. We, we don't know the how the, the radius or the range on that evil sensing ability. Yeah, because but... it's not, I don't think that Lan knew the drag car was there. Yeah. So maybe that is an exception to the rule. So right, maybe. Who knows? Okay, so it's interesting that no Trollocs have come through Watch Hill at all, and their festival's still going on. Yeah. So Rand looks to Egwene and his pals here, and everyone is sort of stretching their aching muscles. Lan and Moraine are the only ones who don't really seem tired at all. Yeah, and that's probably due to the bond, because you learn that warders don't have to rest as often. That's right. So Matt says, okay, everyone, let's head into the village and go to the white boar. <laughs> We're done. We're done for the night. <laughs> yeah. So I had a question about how far they've gone before. Sure. But they have been here because Perrin also agrees and says the food there is good. Yeah. So this is probably like the, the furthest distance that they actually go. That's what I was thinking yeah. after I read this. Pretty or pretty close to. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. So Lan is uh, the safety officer here. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't given that up. And so he interrupts to say, uh, nope, we don't <laughs> stop until we cross the Terran. Only a few minutes rest here. So Ram protests, you know, about the horses. They're too tired. But then he notices that Moraine is over like healing the horses. Yeah, she's like putting her hands on the horses and doing something. Yeah, and then Rand says to Lan here, uh, I did not know that she could do that. And he says, you of all people should have expected that she can do this. Yeah, like, you just got your father healed. Yeah. So there's a... Why is this surprising to yeah. you? It's like, oh, the magic user is doing magic? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. And so Moraine says that she will also heal the people to continue on, um, but not Lan. He doesn't need it yet. And Moraine also cannot heal herself, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah, very, very big point that it kind of put a huge star beside. She's like the opposite of Wolverine. Okay. Because Wolverine can heal himself real and fast. And he has like adamantium claws, and as far as we know, she does not. Yeah, so not opposites. so much about that, <laughs> but about how she's healing others but can't heal herself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So big star beside the magic system here. We kind of learn a couple things. Yeah. I always find it interesting when Rand is observing her. There's like he already kind of mentioned there's no flashes of light or anything. So her healing is just like her putting her hands on and that's it. Yeah. That's all they can actually see. But yeah, what Lan says is that she, what she can do for others, she can't do for herself. So it could be healing, could be curing the fatigue, but also is like what else can she or can't she do uh, one thing I wanted to bring up from the previous chapter, because in the last chapter, we just got that dream sequence. Yes. Moraine, when she first ran into Rand after the big Trolloc attack. Oh, how are your dreams, Randolphor? How are your dreams, Randolphor? Super weird question out Super of context. Super weird. And then she says, you must tell me if you have bad dreams. Because he just had a really, really bad nightmare. And I bet he doesn't tell her. Because he's not really in the habit of telling people things. No, because yeah. he's an idiot. Yeah. Sometimes. So that's the whole like, hey, you should, <laughs> you should tell me about the dreams when they happen. Can she do something about that for herself too? So like, what's the extent there? Right. right? Okay. So it's always kind of something interesting to think about. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Thank you. Yeah, good one. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> so as Moraine is healing Bella, 
Uh, she says that actually she's the best horse uh, with the two rivers stubbornness. Yeah, you were right. She's, good heart. Yeah, she's the least weary of all of them. Which is interesting. Yeah, and good for her. Tough old gal. Yeah. I like that. So just then, a crazy scream calls out in the night sky. And the drag car swoops in over them. And the horses just go nuts. And it's yeah. just like all chaos breaks loose. Crazy scene. Ron is holding on to Cloud's rein as Cloud freaks right out. Screaming and trying to get away and dragging Rand along with him. But Rand is being like flung around as he tries to maintain control. And the horse suddenly stops and he lands really hard. Yeah. So the drag car basically dive bombs them. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting because we were just talking about Lan and Maureen possibly being able to sense evil creatures, but clearly they can't really sense this one. Yeah, weird. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah it might be like because of the fact of just the Whatever creature it is. is, right? So. Yeah. So then La- Rand, sorry, looks all around and he sees that all of the horses have actually been freaking out, except for Maureen. She's just sitting on her horse, all calm and just watching this happen. Yeah, and Lan. And Lan, who's standing with his sword drawn and watching the sky, but his horse is just all quiet beside him. There's something to be said for a well-trained war horse. Right, but also, is there some sort of... I don't know, magic No, just well, well-trained war horse. You think? Yeah, Okay. I, I do think. You probably, sometimes. You probably know also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, but that that's a big thing too, right? Like if a horse is trained for combat, they're yeah. not going to freak out as much in a combat situation. Right. But like just regular old Bella and Cloud, Cloud's like a racehorse, Bella's yeah. a wagon <laughs> hauler. Yeah, hey, so. what are Perrin and Matt's horses' names? Do we know? No, we didn't get names for them. Shoot. I can check into that. Yeah, look into that for I me. I feel like that's something I should know. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. So. Disappointed with myself. I'm just okay. I'm just thinking of the horses here. So Okay. So Lan actually instructs everyone to mount and says that the drag car would not have shown itself if it had not already reported their whereabouts and it's tracking them now. That's really important yeah. information there. So, well, shit, that really sucks. Yeah, but also the fact that the drag car has to report back to the Merdral. Yes. So it's not like a telepathic link. It's got to like go and... Yeah, yeah. Actually... (laughs) Communicate somehow. Somehow. Exactly. So they all mount. Well, except for Rand. And Egwene yells at him to hurry. And he's just been (laughs) staring at the sky and didn't realize that he's drawn his sword. Yeah. What do you think is going on there? We've already talked in the past about how he has phenomenal reaction time. Yeah. He's got good reflexes. Good reflexes. And I think that just out of weird instinct he draws his sword to fight yeah it's kind of like the not what is it flight or fight fight or flight yeah yeah, and he's got the fight going on right now so yeah well that's cool that's good yeah so but he's all embarrassed yeah because like like, wayne and moran are just like staring at him yeah (laughs) doing this and yeah they're all looking at him and i wonder what maureen and lan are thinking of him but he berates himself a little bit here and thinks that his buddies are going to make fun of him later. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I- insecurity right there, too. Really insecure, because I think, like, wow, you're brave and tough, and you're about to fight this thing. Like, yeah. that's kind of cool that you've drawn your sword and you're ready to fight. Yeah. It's not, like, something to be embarrassed about. You wouldn't think so, but... Yeah, but it's Rand, so... Yeah. So he's very swift here, and he leaps up into the saddle, which is interesting and new for him, because the last time he tried to get into that saddle, he was a fumbling, bumbling idiot. Yeah. So that's good. He's learned in a second (laughs) how to mount a horse properly. That's good. Yeah, and probably his height works to his advantage. Yeah. With stuff like that, like he can just sort of like... Being really tall. Leap up in one swoop. So they're all off again. And I just have a little note here that like the horses got healed, but the people didn't get a chance to be healed. Yeah, they didn't really have time. No, because of the whole swooping attack of the crazy evil monster. Yeah, you'd have to think too, are the boys going to want that? No, we learned down the line that they don't. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, and it kind of makes sense because they already have all these like weird... Yeah, but if it could help them ride easier and better yeah but i i understand growing up with stories about like the you know evilness or you yeah. know yeah yeah okay of Aes Sedai. okay well anyway so they didn't even get a chance so they're still sort of just as tired but they have to just go so they gallop all together in a clump here and this kind of pisses lamb off lan off <laughs> safety officer yeah he wants order and a nice line but no one's listening and they hear another scream here so when this is being described I'm picturing or like I'm imagining like this pterodactyl 
type screech. Okay. Do you want to imitate it for no. us? No. You don't? Nope, that's oh, okay. not happening. No. Nope. Okay. Are you going to? No. Okay. <laughs> don't expect me to then. <laughs> but no, but you know what I'm thinking? Like that sort of like harsh, high pitched sort of screech. Okay. Yeah. I want you to sound it out. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, no, I, I think I get what you're saying. But at this point, Lan gives up trying to keep them all in a straight line. And this drag car just keeps screaming in the night. And Cloud is trying to outrun the other horses. So do you think that the drag car is like circling above and shrieking to notify the Merdral? Is that, you mean, is that the means of communication? Yeah. Maybe It's doing like consistent shrieking. We don't really necessarily know if the drag car sees them right now, but like, I'm just asking hypotheticals. Here. Yeah. Okay. I could see that maybe that's the sort of form of communication. Yeah. Like if you could hear the screech from up ahead versus to the east or west or whatever it might be. Right. Like which direction is the prey. Right. So yeah, so maybe thought. something like that. So Ran actually noticed here that Bella is doing an amazing job and thinks that Moraine must have done something more than just help her tiredness. Like give her, giving her longer legs? <laughs> yeah. Well, he says, notices that she's, she's usually quite stout, but now she's like stretched out and looking good and yeah. like a fast, good horse. And he's like kind of surprised about this, but I think that Bella's just great. <laughs> and Ran needs to acknowledge She's that. been underestimated her whole life. Whole yeah, life, maybe that's Now she way. has an opportunity to. Yeah. And I said, maybe Bella has always been this awesome and no one knew it. Yeah. Yeah. So Egwene here is smiling and she's really excited. Yeah, she's loving this. Yeah. So as they ride and I don't really think that she gets the kind of danger that they're actually in. It's like that initial excitement. Yeah. Yeah. So a Madral is actually coming to hunt them down. And this isn't just like fun adventure time. Yeah. And a terrifying bat monster is up, up, up above. Yeah. It's. <laughs> Like, literally run for your lifetime. Yeah. Like, this is something to be scared about, not excited about. But I don't really think she fully gets the picture here. Yeah, okay. And maybe somebody should have stopped at some point to just, like, explain it to her. Poss well, she jumped in at the last second and they're off. I so. know, but, yeah. like, I feel like as the safety officer... Lan would have wanted her to... <laughs> Should have done a bit of Right, because yeah. like, what if she's like, could potentially complicate things? Yeah. And I... maybe she should have been made aware. Absolutely. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Okay. So Lan asks a question of Moraine while they're like galloping away because she responds suddenly. And so they just sort of hear her words. And she says, I cannot, especially from the back of a galloping horse. They're not easily killed and we must run and hope. And so Lan wants her to like lightning bolt the drag car yeah. dead or something. Yeah, I said, hey, can you blast this out of the air? <laughs> yeah, like what could you have said? Yeah, just like, hey, blast it. Yeah, just do your bla like fireball blast fireball or yeah. lightning <laughs> strike. Yeah, yeah, because I think if it's dead, then they don't have to worry about. Yeah, for sure. What the question was, about I it think, tracking was, them. Yeah. Yeah, how can you blow it out of the sky? Yeah, can you just kill it, please? <laughs> so at this point. A weird icy fog starts rolling in and they run through it. And the thing screams from above again and it's clearly following them. Yeah. So this fog is weird because it's so thick that it sort of like muffles the sound of their hooves. Yeah. And I initially write down here, this is definitely evil fog. Oh, really? Okay. I think it's coming from like the drag car or the Merdral or something. Okay. Trying to like slow them down. Yeah, yeah. Or it's like not regular and... I think that it's been created by the evil. Side. You know, it's funny you say that because fog generally has that evil connotation. Behind exactly. It, it's where like fog is evil. It's creepy and yeah. it's spooky and yeah. But fog is just clouds. Sort of. Basically, it's just clouds on the ground. <laughs> well, okay, kind of. <laughs> yeah, but this magical fog is, is brought to you. Should in probably part. fact check that one. <laughs> yeah. So magical fog brought to you in part by Maureen for cover. Right. Yeah. Now, I did find that out about, Good <laughs> a, yeah, like not even a paragraph later. So Lan and Moraine are keeping up their convo here. And we can hear them talking over the sound of the horses running and everything. But Lan is really worried because he says there's only one place we can be going. Yeah. Like they know we're dro going down this road, driving. <laughs> they know we're <laughs> thumping down this road on the horses. Yeah. And it's north. And there's only one place, and it's yeah. Taran Ferry. If you look at the map out of the out of the two rivers, it's literally a road north to Bear Lawn and then east. Yes. 
into more parts of Andor. Yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, there's no other roads. Yeah, but she actually retorts and says that Merdral are sly, and she will use this against it. Yeah, she will be even slyer. Sly ear. Sly ear. Mm. Okay. I think that's the right word. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so now I'm thinking that maybe Moraine conjured this fog to hide them yes. from the evil. She's got an awesome plan that kind of unfolds here. So. Yes. Very smart lady. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Confirmation. Yes, Rand is realizing that this is Aes Sedai magic. And he's actually very uncomfortable with it touching him. Yeah. He realizes he's been holding his breath as not to breathe in the fog. And then he berates himself and calls himself nine shades of an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, take it easy, buddy. He beats himself up a lot. A lot for even just his own thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So right now they're actually putting a lot of trust into Lan and the fact that he knows where to go. Yeah. The screams start to fade away and they disappear. So I guess either the drag car has gone off to report, send a report, send a, you know, text or something. Yeah. (laughs) And, or it's the fog is working and it's sort of lost track of them. Yeah. And that kind of makes sense. Like if it can't find them, it's not going to be screaming. Yeah. Because if that is the communication system. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So Rand is growing cr- quite, quite tired and he really doesn't know how long it's been. He says probably hours. So then Lan calls for them to slow down and stop and they have reached Terran Ferry. Yeah. So wow. Hard ride. Hard ride and probably record time. Yes. He, at, le- at least for Rand. Yeah. And- Rand thinks that this is probably the fastest anyone has ever traveled to Terran Ferry. And yeah. it's like, okay, bud. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> like, if you guys can do it, yeah. chances are other people have done it too. But they got a magical heel in the middle, so. Well, the horses did. Well, the but horses are the that, ones running, so. You think that other horses have never gotten magical healing before? Probably not in Emmett's Field. Actually, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> they reach Terran Ferry, and Rand has heard description of this place, but he's never seen it. So, this is definitely farther than he's ever been. Yeah. And all the rest of them too, I would assume. Not yeah. Tom, but... Yeah, I, I would assume the rest of them too. Yeah. So he recognizes the tall houses built up on high foundations. And the town actually sits on the banks of the Terran, which is, I suppose is a body of water. The Terran? Yeah. Is, it, is that the name of it? Is it a river? Is it a yeah, lake? Yeah, the Terran River is the Terrendral which is the river that runs oh, west to east. Oh, duh. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, the Terran Terren, is... Yeah, that's yeah. why it's called Terran Terren. Ferry. Because there's a ferry at the Terran River. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, easy then. So the houses are actually built up uh, in case of flooding in the spring. So they head into the village, and all Ran knows about Terran Ferry is that the people kind of suck... <laughs> and they have a reputation for slyness and trickery. Yeah, I, I wrote down here, let's see what Rand knows about Terran fairy folk. Yeah. And it's all the negative, terrible things. Yeah, that's all he knows. <laughs> so they come to a stop in front of this tall, dark house, and Lan dismounts and heads up the stairs to pound on the door. Bang, 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 pound, pound, pound. Like he doesn't stop until someone comes yeah. and opens the door. So it's nighttime. And it's dark and there's no one around and the fog is still all around. Yeah, like Moraine has literally like swamped this place with fog. Yeah. Yeah. So Master Hightower actually flings this door open pretty pissed off and understandably understandably so. (laughs) Yeah. So Lan knows him or knows him by name anyway. Yeah. And says that they want to cross on his ferry. But he says he never, ever, ever goes at night and he's definitely not going in this fog. Not so a come back in the day. And Lan catches his wrist before he can leave and turn around. And he starts piling gold coins in the man's hand. It looks like it must be more gold than he's ever seen before. Because yeah. he agrees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he does. I mean, Lan's got a good way to go about this. Is just pay the guy so much that he can't argue with it. Yes, exactly. It's not a bad way to get, to get what you want, I guess. So. No. And Lan also tells him that once they reach where they want to go, he's going to pay him again. Yeah. So half now, half up, half later once the job is done. Right. So the guy finally agrees, says, I need to get my haulers. Yep. And Lan says, we'll meet you there. Yeah. And it's kind of funny thinking about what a ferry used to be versus like what a ferry is today. It's like a boat nowadays, but ferry back then is just like a raft with haulers being guys dragging the the ferry across the river on ropes oh yeah yeah i pictured it as a big boat 
It's not a boat. Oh. Yeah, it's just a raft with walls. <laughs> <laughs> And the guys, like, there's two ropes across the sides. Yeah. And the guys just, like, grab the rope and, like, walk. And they pull the ferry across. Okay. Yeah. Weird. So that, that's what, what he okay. means when he says, I have to get my haulers. Oh, yeah. His haulers are, like, big muscular dudes <laughs> <laughs> who drag the boat. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that wraps up this chapter, basically. Yeah, it does. So I got a couple things I want to circle back to. The first one being Matt's awesome joke that you didn't bring up. Did you catch it? Mm. When they're introduced to Master Hightower, Matt says he never even saw a Hightower, which is funny. Because when they were talking about Terran fairy people, Ren was meant to thinking they have weird names. Yes. Yeah. So Hightower is a funny name. To them. To them. Yeah. yeah. It's Matt's joke. It's not my joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, he thinks it's funny, but yeah. then he's quickly like elbowed to just shut up. Yeah. Uh, second thing, we got the best Terran fairy slight so far, in my opinion. Yes. If you shook hands with the Terran Fairy Man, people said you counted your fingers afterwards. Uh Uh-huh. Because they're a bunch of thieves. Yeah. Yeah. Tricky thieves. Yeah. And the last thing is Bella, most underrated horse ever coming from the two rivers. Exactly. Yeah. So she gets like super, (laughs) super healed so she can keep up with, you know, Cloud and Moraine's horse and Lan's horse. So any thoughts on that? Um, Well, we do know that Moraine heals her and says specifically, oh, Ran, you might be right. But maybe she did some, like, extra yeah. sort of powers or something to, like, for her. power boost <laughs> Bella. Yeah, but then I also have this theory. Okay. I know you've kind of shut this down already, so I'm, like, medium about this theory. Okay. Okay, but it's still there, so I'm maybe just going to say it. Okay, I'm not sure what I shut down, but yeah, go. Okay. okay, so my theory is that the people, or, like, Moraine has magic, okay. and she might have some sort of magic control over the horse that she rides. Okay. So you kind of shut that down and said, no, a war, well-trained uh, war horse okay. is you know gonna act better yeah but i think still kind of think that maybe people you know and then lan has the protection and sort of has that magic bond so he has better control over his horse okay and then i'm thinking maybe it actually has something to do with Egwene. in what sense what do you well we actually find out you know next chapter that maybe there's something a little more to Egwene. yeah and i did have a little bit of a prediction that maybe she will one day yeah uh, you did you know because she has like listening to the wind the hear the wind power and stuff so maybe she has some magic control over her horse too okay so i'm wary of my theory because of how hard you shut it down and you okay. don't just shut things down like you <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i need to lead you off <laughs> yeah no don't do that but that's was just my original theory about that but if that's not true then i don't really have a th- I, I don't really know okay well we'll leave it at that then for now and we'll come back to it yeah maybe i'll just stand by maybe bella was just awesome all along all right. Maybe Bella could be a nice to die. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Should be like a horse school for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, training in Tarvalin, just like at the stables. For ponies. Yeah, for ponies. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> All right. Okay, so are we ready to go into chapter 12? Yeah, I think so, because there is a lot to unpack in this chapter as well. Yeah, this is a big one. Yeah. So this is called Across the Terran. Yes, and we do get a new picture. Yes, it is. It's the left side of the symbol. Yes, the white portion. Right, so yeah, I was going to ask, is this side typically the white side? Yes. Like, And then I said maybe it's for Moraine's magic. Okay. So maybe we'll find out a little bit more about Moraine and how she uses her magic and that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So the gang is taking Lan's lead here, and they actually are just walking their horses over to where the ferry is. And Ran is really sore and really stiff after this long ride. And again, I sort of question whether or not they got healed because it all everything happened so fast and then they ended up not getting healed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the people did not, the horses did just due to time. Right. Because the dr- Drakkar just kind of came down. Yes, exactly. Okay, so Rand hears Maureen speak again to an uh, unspoken question from Lan. And then I that, like Lan's whispering or something. Or? Yeah, I kind of I actually wrote down here. Can she read his mind? Okay, so like Maureen hearing his thoughts and then like answering, answering out them. Loud? Yeah, because bo- two times now she's been answering yeah. something like we hear her, but we don't hear him. Yeah. Or he's just being really quiet and tactful and she hears <laughs> it and then she just like is blurting everything out. Yeah. It's either it's one or the other. Okay. <laughs> Put that down on the uh, prediction column here. Yeah, so she says, out of nowhere, it seems, you must handle it. He will remember too much 
and I can't stand out. Yeah, we don't want Maureen to stand out in his thoughts, though. So yeah, unpack we don't that know, if you have... Yeah, yeah, so we don't really know who he is. I'm assuming it's the high tower. That would make guy. sense, yeah. So something... And then I think, well, maybe Lan needed to be in charge of paying him mm-hmm. because he she doesn't want to stand out as an Aes Sedai. Yeah, because they're being chased by a Merdral, so... Yes. Yeah, like probably Lan and like merchants guards are more common in Terran Ferry. So like a fighting man yeah. wouldn't be as noticeable as like a yeah. noble It's a little odd, or, but it's yeah. like she's clearly out of sorts yeah. compared to all the rest of the people. So she's she... prettier than Terran Ferry people. Yeah, that's so. what it also sounds like. So <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so she can't stand out. Whatever she's talking about, she doesn't want to have to do any of the dealings with this guy. It sounds yeah. like she's just going to blend into the background. And as they walk, everyone is sort of grumbling and complaining. Everyone except for Egwene. Yeah, because if you're the one who wants to go on the adventure, you don't get to complain. Yep. Difference in mindset about yes. whether or not you want the adventure or not. Yeah. And that's what Rand sort of notes here is that she didn't have this thrust upon her. She chose it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's feeling pretty happy to have a village around him. Even if it is Terran yeah. Ferry. <laughs> Just still like... <laughs> still jabs. Shots, yeah. Still lots of jabs at Terran Ferry, even though they're there. Mm-hmm. Still feeling that way. So Lan stops abruptly, and Ran actually runs into his stallion. And he notes that the fog, though not gone, is actually a little bit thinner right now. I actually think it's really funny. So Ran's description of a dock... Yeah is really funny because he's never seen one before never yeah he's never had any reason to go out onto a boat or even like go out where water is at all yeah so he says it's a bridge that leads nowhere except to the ferry boat yeah so new concept yeah it's really really quite funny so he's very cautious of it too because he accidentally sort of steps on it because the fog is covering his feet and he feels the wood under his feet and he backs off of it and feels relief when he feels the dirt again. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. He's like, whoa, I'm standing on the well, wood. Well, it would like probably move a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right? and he's like so, worried he's about to fall through or yeah. something. Like he doesn't trust it. I think he mentions that the biggest thing he's seen is like a pond, right? So. Yes. And this is a river that can pull under like strong swimmers and everything too. So. Yeah. Yeah. New it, concept. It's a big deal. So. Lan hisses at them and throws back Perrin's cloak to reveal the big axe. And Ran doesn't quite get what's going on, like normal. But he does the same to show his sword. Yeah, and you know what they're doing here? Yeah, they're showing off that they have weapons, so don't like try to rob us or yeah, whatever. Cause yeah, because we know that High Tower is going to get a bunch of haulers, yeah. big strong guys. So best to show off your, your metal just in case. Yes. Like so the ferry boat guy, Master Hightower, and his men approach them holding torches. And it's still like quite foggy, and um, but their torches sort of burn off some of the fog. Yeah. It says. So he examines the group here, and Ran sees how casual but deadly the warder looks. And Ran thinks that he shouldn't even try to look like that because they will all just laugh at him. Yeah. Man. He's copying the pose here, but... Yeah, but no, but he thinks, I can't even do that. I'll never be as good as Lan. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone will just make fun of me. Everyone, I'll just look so stupid if I try to look like that. Self-consciousness is right, oh my right showing And here. the comp- self-confidence, too. Like he, Lack of. Lack of, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing Rand's confidence build as we go on. Yeah, and like what, what it's going to take to get him there. Yeah, I'm really hoping... Yeah. That's something, there's something along the way because it's going to be quite an interesting journey for him, I think. I think they're really playing up how self-conscious he is. Yeah. And how much confidence he doesn't have. Like where he starts. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, so he is going to have a real big sort of character arc there going forward. So Matt puts his hand to his quiver and Tom Marilyn does a fancy little trick to reveal a dagger and twirls it around in his fingers. Yeah, flourishes it. Yeah, and Moraine actually gives a little laugh at this. Yeah, a delightful laugh. Yeah, so that's kind of funny. She's having this interaction with Tom yeah. because we weren't really sure about their relationship. Well, they had a really weird starting to their relationship where it was like kind of threatening-ish. Yeah, a little bit. And then now she's just sort of like... Laughing at his fun tricks. Yeah, and Egwene actually claps. Yeah, and then the, is immediately like... He's like, oh wait, <laughs> we're not watching this yeah. at festival. So yeah. Hightower is less than amused and says, I want my gold. 
But don't even try any funny business because I've already put the other gold in a safe place where you can't get at it. So it's funny because he's not trusting them. Yeah, it's like two un- people who are not trusting each other having a weird interaction. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Lan says you can get the rest when we get to the other side. Like, I already said that, bud. Yeah. Well, Lan goes into it a little bit more, too. Like, hey, the first person who <laughs> says, don't rob me, is probably someone who was... Thinking of robbing. Thinking of robbing you, so... Yeah, exactly. He gets into that later, though, so... Yeah, he does. So, they actually make their way onto the boat. A little uneasy, uh, but they all get on there with their horses. They have to stay to the center of yeah. it. And Hightower is made very uneasy by all of this fog, um, but he really wants the gold, so off they go. He's doing it. Yeah, and this is where we get the description of what the fairy looks like. Yes. With the two this ropes and the people. This is probably something I just like glazed over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they're just like walking and hauling the ropes to move them along, so no motors here. Yeah, and when you say walking, like on the other bank, or... No, they're like on the boat walking from one side of the ferry to the other. So as oh, you they're do just that, like pulling. Yeah, they're like pulling it. Yeah, okay. It's a pulling motion. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just having trouble picturing this whole thing. I could draw it out later. With yeah, maybe stick that'll help and... me out because I really can't picture what the heck you're talking about. I've been really trying to just play along, but I have no. I'll, I'll do. I'll do a diagram. <laughs> I'm picturing people like walking in the water, like chest height, pulling this thing along, and I know that's not right. <laughs> Should we take like a brief 30 minute intermission here so I can. <laughs> oh, it's not even a little bit important, yeah. I think. So we'll just carry on. <laughs> just pretend this never happened. So off they go. As they're going, Rand and Lan here have a quiet little conversation on the boat. And I think it's interesting their relationship mm-hmm. and how Lan is way more open to having these sort of conversations with Rand yeah. than he was before. Because before he was like, I don't know why you're so important, sheep herder. Yeah. I don't know why she thinks you're so great. Maybe he's like accepting the fact that they're with them now. So Lan's like taking them under the wings of the safety officer. Yeah, a little bit. Like now you're officially my responsibilities. So yeah. it's kind of like how he was teaching Perrin how to search the barn. Yes. Which he did a terrible job of. Yeah, he didn't do but that very well. Yeah, he tried to teach him. So. <laughs> so Rand asks him if they really would have robbed us. It looks like they were afraid that we would rob them. And Lan makes sure that Hightower isn't listening here before he answers. And he says something sort of insightful about if a stranger thinks that you will harm them, they will be quicker to harm you. Yeah. Which is just good life advice. Lan is full of Lan excellent yeah. life advice. Yeah. So Lan says, I'm surprised that you asked that considering the way people in Emmonsfield speak of Terran fairy folk. <laughs> yeah. And Ran sort of stutters about how that's just sort of what people say, but he didn't actually think people would be like that. Yeah. And it's like outside Evansfield, people are different, buddy. Like there's yeah. a reason that everybody thinks this way. And it's probably because they've interacted with Terran fairy people and the majority of them probably suck. <laughs> It's possible. Yeah, Yeah. definitely possible. So Rand is kind of concerned here that Hightower might tell the Fade uh, where they are or send Trollocs after them. Yeah, like ferry the Trollocs across the river Yeah, or something. That sounds kind of terrifying. And probably not likely. Not even a little bit. But Lan laughs at this. He he chuckles, it says. And I'd like to picture Lan chuckling. I think (laughs) that's funny. He's a very stone-faced man. Yeah. Yeah. So he chuckles at this and says, no way, man. We don't have to worry about dark friends here. Yeah. Yeah, and he makes a good point. Like, robbing someone is one thing. Yeah. But, like, taking bloodthirsty monsters across, like, that's a little bit, you know, kind of out there here. Yeah, but also it turns out not out of the realm of possibilities. Not completely, but just very unlikely. Yeah, exactly. So this concerns Rand. You know, he thinks at least you could tell a Trolloc from sight and you don't have to worry about if other people are bad guys. Yeah. Like, that's hard for him. That's a really good point. I, I kind of always equated, well, right now I'm equating the Dark Friends to, in Harry Potter. Mm. Death the Eaters? Death Eaters, yeah. yeah. It's like you don't necessarily yeah. know. Yeah, and I've also heard the Merdral compared to Dementors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right? So there's a couple, like, similarities <laughs> yeah. there. But it's the whole fact, like, a Death Eater or a Dark Friend could be... Anybody. Anybody. And a Trolloc is clearly a bad guy. Yeah, exactly. And that's <laughs> and, what Rand's kind of struggling with. Yeah. Just the intricacies of life outside of Emmonsfield. Definitely. Yeah. It's like kind of a shock. Yes. Yeah. Culture shock, for sure. So they reach the other side and they all unload so that 
Hightower calls out for the rest of his payment. Yeah. And Moraine is already sort of on the bank, concealed by some mist, and she sort of calls out, It shall be paid! A silver mark for each of your men for the quick crossing. So generous. Ooh, and then I said, Uh oh, is this that Aes Sedai trickery? Oh, okay, where like they don't actually. Like I thought they weren't actually gonna pay them or get out of having to pay for some way. So you thought that they weren't gonna pay? Yeah, yes, I did. Okay. So. The ferryman kind of hesitates like he smells danger, uh, but his men already start unloading for their silver. Yeah. I mean, they've kind of been loose with their money. Like, they weren't going to steal oh, Tom's horse. No, no, they were no. They going to pay for it. Yes, I like, know that. I know. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Because I, I already felt like he, I felt like something was up here. Yeah. And the only thing that my brain could think of was, yeah. well, they aren't just gonna, they just aren't gonna pay him. They're gonna trick him somehow into not having to pay him more. Uh, okay. That's all I could think of because clearly something's up. Yeah. Like it's kind of weird. It's a yeah. weird interaction. Um, and so all the men unload. They want their money. They're all eager for it. And Lan starts handing out coins. And the squad is waiting sort of for their next instructions anx- anxiously. And Moraine is staring out into the water. And Rand notes that she has that look again of like looking beyond what's actually there. And so Lan, um, as he finishes paying the haulers, uh, he doesn't hand over the purse of his coins. So he still has more in there. He still has it. And that's what Hightower is eyeing. Yeah. Right? And then that's why I really think at this point that he's not going to get paid. Because it's... The way I read it, it seems like Lan is hesitating to hand over the rest of the money. And then especially because of what happens next, I'm thinking like this is like some weird plan or ruse that has come into fruition. Okay. Because the boat sort of starts to break free from the landing and there's loud cracks and bangs of wood and Egwene screams and Tom curses and then Hightower starts yelling, it's loose, it's loose, get it. Yeah. So then uh, my brain's trying to predict what's about to happen. Okay. And I think what's happening is Moraine is causing the fairy to sort of break free from the landing. Mm -hmm. And then they're all going to scramble, go get it, go get it. And then they're going to get back on the boat and be too concerned and maybe forget that they need to get paid. So they don't get paid. Okay. That's what I think is happening. Okay. And then no. Not, what, at all. not <laughs> even a little bit. It's actually good they don't get back on the boat because some crazy whirlpool starts sucking the boat yeah. down <laughs> into the Terran Terran River. Yeah, and then like sinks it. Yeah. Yeah. Gone. So then I said, Oh, is this a way to avoid paying him? And then a big nope. No, you're wrong. They're going to pay him extra. Yeah. So the lights on the boat are like sort of spinning. It gets all sucked down. And then Maureen says, oh, an unfortunate occurrence. Yeah. In a very hollow voice. So is there any question in your mind of who caused all this? Not even a little bit. Okay. Yeah, no. Unless <laughs> it was Bella, but. <laughs> Probably not. No. Bella, yeah. the Bella said I. So no. that was pretty crafty <laughs> of Maureen, though was to offer the haulers a silver mark each. Yes, oh yes. To get them off the ferry yep. so that she could sink it yep. without killing anyone. Yeah, that was that's actually very good of her. It's very nice of her yeah. not to kill them. And then Lan says, so this is definitely the part where he had to take care of it. Yeah. This was the conversation they had before. They knew this was going to happen. Yeah. And you're the one who's going to have to deal with him because he can't notice me. Yeah. Otherwise, if he notices, like, I'm an Aes Sedai, then he'll know I use magic to sink his boat. So she's, like, off in the fog, basically. For yes. That, so. so Lan says, it seems you won't be carrying anyone else across for a Shoot, while. Right? And that's, a, like, a veiled threat, almost, I think. Yeah. Like, uh, do you look go. at what just happened. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Don't go making another ferry anytime soon. Yeah, don't be transporting any Trollocs across yeah. or something. They're just covering all their bases yeah. at this point. And he says, but this should repay you. Yeah. So he does. He ends up paying him, and I think he ends up paying him more even for his boat. Yeah, they, they do seem like they have enough gold to not worry about it. So, so with a frightened sort of cry... Uh, Hightower runs away after snatching the gold and his men, they just like take off. Yeah. So, well, shall we? And Maureen just carries on like nothing happened. (laughs) 
And Ron tries to tell himself, oh, it's probably just a coincidence. Yeah. You know. He's I'll, like not getting, he's not picking up on this at I all. I think he is picking up on it, but he doesn't want to believe it. Yeah, that, that that's fair. That's a good point. Yeah. Like it's like shutting it out of your mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, come on, bud. But then Figure again, here, he doesn't realize that everyone's left. Yeah. <laughs> and he re- and he turns around and everyone's gone because he's just like two in his head. So at what point do you think Rand is just going to get completely up, left behind? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Because this time no one even said, Rand, come yeah. on. He's the kid who gets lost in the woods because he <laughs> Yeah, because he's like looking at a butterfly yeah. <laughs> and chased it that way. Like, geez, Rand, pay attention. So he hurries to catch up. And as he catches up to them, the fog around him is completely gone. And the fog is actually running in a line on the edge of the river, like thick on one side and clear on the other. Yeah. So Moraine and Lan are speaking together away from the group. As Rand approaches Egwene, she grins at him. Like, this is so much fun. She yeah. She can't she, believe again, she's this. She's digging this so much. Yeah. So he can actually hear Moraine now, and she's sounding quite satisfied. She says that the fog follows the river as if it were drawn by a pen and not 10 women in Tar Valen could do that unassisted, much less galloping on the back of a horse. Yeah, so that's a huge point here that Moraine is really good. Yeah, and a tad boastful. She's like proud of herself too. Yeah, clearly. Like this is, this sounds like a new thing she's, like she hasn't necessarily had to do something this extravagant before. Right. And then this is the actual confirmation that Maureen is casting the fog as protection. Yes. Yeah, we do get that. It was implied earlier, but this is actually when we find out that that's exactly what this was. So Tom approaches saying that, uh, maybe keep us protected for a little longer. Well, yeah. And this is kind of a weirdly phrased sentence because it says, I don't mean to complain, Maureen said I. And then Tom said, sounding oddly diffident for him. Yeah. Right? Because usually he's like the arrogant, in your face kind of guy. But to speak to her and like almost ask something of her. Like he's being really polite. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's how you get things from people. And I think that he's aware of that. Sometimes. Well, yeah. That's Maybe with her. Maybe with her. Yeah. But no, he gets right shut down. Because the Drakar could come back and see us. But we learned that the Drakars are not very smart. And apparently Moraine is very smart. So the Drakar will see that the side of the river is clear where they are. And it will report that back to the Fade. So she explains that she has cloaked the river in both directions for miles. And the Fade will think that we're escaping down the river. And if she keeps them covered, it'll be like leading the Fade to exactly where they are. Yeah. So in my mind, I always had trouble picturing this image of what she actually did. So just to kind of paint the picture for anyone who's still confused on it, you have Emmons Field as a point in the middle. They're going straight north up to Bearlawn. Yes. And then you have the Terendral, which runs west to east through that. And they just took the ferry across. And then Maureen puts the fog all the way down the river east-west to make it seem like they might be taking a boat, but they're actually going straight north still, not covered by fog. Right. So yeah. this is what she meant by using his slyness against him. Exactly. Because he's going to think that he's very clever, noting that they're using the fog as protection right so he's gonna think oh you're not that clever because i know you're under the fog yeah right and so she's hoping that they get caught up searching yeah and where like, the fog is yeah and split forces but going both ways but they've gone in a third direction yeah they went up where there's no fog because i think that she's hoping the fade doesn't realize that they're traveling uncovered yeah because who, why would why would they do that? Yeah. So. And then Tom goes, oh, shoot, sorry. That is very smart. Yeah. You're a very smart lady. <laughs> so Matt speaks up and stumbles through sort of asking, you know, if she was the one who sunk the ferry boat and why would you do that and <laughs> what's happening? So Moraine says that if she explains every action that she does to them, then they would have no time for anything else. And all they need to know is that she intends to get them safely to Tarvalin and they just basically need to trust her. So she she allows the one question from Tom. Yeah. And then she cuts Matt off real hard. Well, I think that she wanted to explain to everyone how smart she is. And she's proud of herself. Yeah. For that. But the whole 
sink in the ferry boat thing like mm, let's don't. not talk about that don't bring that up that yeah. wasn't my proudest moment so nothing we to do had with the fact to that do that and... it might be yeah. also that <laughs> but i also think that she's quite proud of herself and wanted to explain what she did because it's very yeah ingenious. and then avoid the other it's other ingenious subjects, so, so yeah. exactly so lance says let's get a move on and he goes up into the clearing yep so Perrin says that he wants to rest and Egwene actually gives a tired sigh and Rand here is kind of funny because he's feeling guilty that he slept all day and the others haven't. Mm-hmm. So he tells Moraine that they all need to rest. Like he's the little advocate for everybody. And like you rode just as hard as them. But like, I don't know. I don't think you need to feel guilty about the fact that you got to sleep all day and they didn't. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Because so. I mean, realistically, they also didn't drag their dying father through the woods all previously yeah, the night he, before. He was up for if like, anything, what? <laughs> I would think that Rand is more tired and more wary from everything he had already been through. Yeah, like granted, like Egwene probably wasn't out there too with the frying pan, right? Hitting Trollocs in the well, head. Well, no, the and I mean, like even if they were up, it yeah. wasn't as physical yeah. as what Rand, went, Rand through. went through. But he doesn't see that part. He just sees the part where that he did differently from them and feels guilty for it. Yeah, and that just like speaks to his character, I think. Very much so. So they all follow land. Land. I keep doing that. Land and Rand. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're following the order up past the bank. And there's some sort of like wigwam house here made of like trees and stuff. Yeah, it's like collapsed trees, sort of. Yeah, do you know what a wigwam is? It's like a teepee, but like yeah. closed in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's lit a fire actually under there already. And it crawls out and tells them that the wood is dry and they will rest warm tonight. So that's really nice. Egwene is surprised that Lan expected them to stop here. But he says all nonchalant. Seems like a likely place. So I like to be prepared. Yeah. So Lan, it's kind of like he's a Boy Scout. He is I was, prepared I for everything. I have in my notes, he's the ultimate Boy Scout. Oh, okay. I wrote that down. Nice. Yeah. He is. He's prepared for everything. Yeah. But I also noted that before he said... We stop after we cross the Terran. When they all wanted to stop at Watch Hill. Yeah. He didn't say we stop once we get to Terran Ferry. He specifically said when we cross the Terran, we stop. Mm -hmm. So he is very literal. Yeah. It is like a hundred yards he knows exactly From what's up. From where they cross, the t- and that's where they're staying. That's yeah. where we rest. So it, there was no implications. Like, there was nothing to be inferred from that. It was, we rest as soon as we cross. Yeah. And he had that all prepared and ready to go. So Moraine tells the guys to tend to the horses, and she will see what she can do to heal sort of everyone's tiredness after. But first, she wants to speak to Egwene. Yeah. So, ooh, what's going to... What are they going to talk about? private conversation, sort of. Yeah, so the two of them go off into, like, sort of the wigwam. And then we go to the scene with the boys and the horses. And Lan tells them to keep them saddled in case they have to get a quick getaway. Yeah. Because the boys sort of start taking the saddles off the horses. Yeah. But no, not a good idea. Yeah, horses aren't going to rest as well with all that gear on, so... But... Better to be safe. Yes. So Perrin says that he doesn't think the horses even need to eat because he's like sort of struggling to feed his horse. And Lan assures them that yes, they do. They may be able to run and they may not feel tired, but they are. So Moraine only made them not feel the exhaustion. Yeah. But it's still there. And that's a really critical point is that the feeling's gone, but the exhaustion still is there. Right. Like they would run until they drop dead. Yeah. Is what, how he explains it. So Matt says, oh, is that what she would do for us and our tiredness? Yeah. Like, no, thank not, you. Not quite. We, we find out really soon here, but. Yeah. So Rand is totally against having the one power used <laughs> on him. And he thinks, light, she's pretty much admitted to sinking the fairy. Like, like what else would she yeah, do? Yeah, man. <laughs> Come on. Like, that. why are you so, you think whirlpools just happen in the middle of a river? It, it is that whole, like, he is, you know, gone his entire life probably with no you know, actual interaction with magic. Yeah. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's a lot to take in. So yeah. So Lan sort of just laughs at them and says, just think of it as like an extra night's sleep. That's what it'll feel like. Yeah. So the scream of the drag car here suddenly echoes over the river and they all sort of freeze. But Lan shrugs and says, hopefully it searches the river for us and let's get inside and eat something. Yeah, it seems that's what it's doing. Yeah, and Lan is really just putting a lot of trust in Moraine's plan. 
And if she's not worried, then he's not worried. Yep. That's really what it comes down to. So Rand is the first to crawl into the little tree branch house thing. And he sees Egwene and Moraine sitting together at the fire. And Moraine is speaking. But she's telling Egwene all about the one power. And we get a nice big info dump here yeah. on how everything works. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, these last like three pages are just packed. Oh yeah, so I basically I feel like writing my notes. I ended up trying to summarize this, just writing word for word the conversation. <laughs> so, so if there's anything you want to jump in with to help me out, but I, I I can interject a few times. Yeah, but it's it's uh, pretty dense. Yeah, it's pretty dense. So we actually learn that the one power comes from the true source. So it's the driving force of creation and the force the creator made to turn the wheel of time. Yeah, and we talked about that in the beginning too about we that. We did, yeah. So Sidin is the male half and that's the one we've heard about. Yes, before. and that's the dragon's fang, the black mark. Exactly. So, and then Sidar. Sidar. Sidar is the female half. So they work against each other at the same time to provide the force. Yeah, and that is the symbol at the beginning of the chapter. Yes. Okay. So, but then we already know that Sidin is fouled by the Dark One. So that's that taint yes. we've heard about. So she describes it quite poetically. Yes. So she says it's like water with oil on the top and the water is still pure underneath, but it can't be touched without touching the foulness. Yes. Very interesting way to describe it. Yeah. And it's very like a lot of imagery. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense for the foulness of it that you reach through it. Like it makes sense in my brain. And then when you pull it out, your hand actually still has oil on exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So only Sidar, Sidar is safe to be used. Yeah, well, by women. Yes, exactly. So then Matt comes in behind Rand here. And the women sort of ignore them all coming in. And the men come in and sort of gather by the fire. And they pretty much just stare mm -hmm. at these two uh, women talking. And Lan goes about his business preparing tea. The one thing that I always note is Rand always describes people as not paying attention. Lan wasn't paying attention to this. Maureen yeah. and Aguina. I don't think people pay so little attention. No, I think they're just more tactful. Yeah. Like, you don't have to stare at somebody to, to be, be listening yeah. to what they're saying. So, like, when, when they say Lan's not paying attention, he probably pays attention to literally everything. He's safety officer. Well, yeah, and yeah. same with Tom. Tom Marilyn pretends he's going about packing his pipe. But he is listening. He sure is. Yeah. Sure as heck he's listening. Yeah. So, yeah, Tom is like Lan and pretends to be occupied by his pipe. Moraine and Egwene continue on acting as if they were alone. Which is kind of interesting because it's that's not unusual for Moraine, but it's a little bit unusual for Egwene. Egwene's in her inner heyday though. She is she's loving the element. adventure yeah. and she's getting a conversation from an Aes Sedai about what she's so clearly excited yes. about. So. so Moraine answers Egwene's question that we didn't hear. But we can figure but out But we can easily. infer. She says, no, the power can't be used up. And Egwene asks... You really think I can learn? And Rand notes here how beautiful he thinks Egwene looks here. Like she's just glowing, mm -hmm. right? And then Egwene says, I can become an Aes Sedai. And Rand jumps up and hits his head on the low roof. And Tom Marilyn yanks him back down and says, don't be a fool. It's beyond you now, boy. Yeah, so let's get into this before we proceed sure, here. Sure, yep. So number one thing about the true source being used, good metaphor about the power being a river and they're a water wheel. So yes. that's why it can't be used up. So you're like a conduit, basically, Yeah. for the power. And then Egwene being so beautiful yet so far away, like a couple chapters ago, and in this time, we're talking like yesterday, he was yeah, like yeah. literally two days ago. <laughs> yeah, he was thinking, oh, it's too soon to get married. <laughs> and yeah. now all of a sudden he's like, oh my God, out of reach though. So yes. it's kind of like you want what you can't have. And he sees her like slipping away from him. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay, I guess we'll find out. But yeah. I hope not. <laughs> well, yeah, for, I mean, when Tom says it's out, it's, it's beyond, beyond you, you. It's like yeah. Tom clearly thinks like, oh, she's 
She's gone, man. She's gone. Like, you lost her. Yeah, <laughs> That's it. there's nothing you can do right yeah. now. So Moraine's answer is quite interesting. She says that only a very few can learn. And you are one of the handful for whom there is no need to learn. So touching the source will come to you whether you want it or not. Without teaching in Tarvalin, you won't learn to channel fully and you might not survive. So that's yeah. big. Yeah. So men born with the ability, um, usually they all die. And then we get a word here. So the red Aja. 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 Or Aja. Okay. Doesn't find them. So they die if the red Aja does not doesn't find them find and them gentle them. And gentle them. So let's unpack this paragraph here. Well, yeah, but also yeah. right as she's saying this, Tom Marilyn sort of lets out this funny growl. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So first thing. Moraine starts that by calling Egwene child. Yeah. Where do we hear her call someone child already? Nynaeve. Nynaeve. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of that first thing mm, is... Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we find out like in a page about... A little more about that. But Moraine refers to Egwene as a child. So it's very interesting there. Um, and then we also learn about w- the one power channelers. There's people who can learn to do it and those who don't have to learn. Okay. So it's like the natural natural ability. Yeah. And the only reason I bring that up is because in some stories, like magic wielding is something that's innate. Yeah. Like it's not something that you can learn and do. And then in some series, like you can only be learned. But this is like a weird combination of both. Okay. Yeah. Now, glossary definition time. It's time for glossary definitions with Brett. Ajahs. Uh, and we kind of get Rand's description of it in a second here. But an Aja in the White Tower is basically an Aes Sedai faction. So they're split into different factions. And that's all we're going to talk about right now. But the Red Aja is one that's pretty much dead set on finding and eliminating men who can channel. Yeah. So I have here Rand doesn't know much about them. And he only knows that the Red Aja has a prime duty of preventing another breaking. Yes. And they hunt down every man who ever dreamed of wielding the one power yeah so we know that if all men are doomed to go crazy right and break the world apart it kind of makes sense but that's also like the big thing about tom growling deep in his throat when that's brought up odd little thing there to to kind of happen yeah a little bit um and rand has only really heard of three men who this has ever happened to but sort of like a story like really far away that travels to him kind of like news of war yeah it doesn't actually affect him but he's heard of it And they've caused a lot of destruction um, before the Aes Sedai found them. Yeah, which is interesting because we've heard of the three false dragons. Yeah. But none of them could channel except for the latest one. Yes. So. Okay. So Moraine is still going on here. And some women die without proper training too. The women who aren't found often become the wisdoms of their village. Boom. Interesting. So... The old blood is strong in Emmonsfield, and that goes back to that story she told yep, about the Menethrin. Yeah, Menethrin. And Moraine knew what Egwene was as soon as she saw her. So no eyes that I can stand in the presence of this and not feel it. And then I sort of put a star here, and I put Nynaeve, question mark, question mark. Yeah. Because I either think that... Maureen didn't know that Nynaeve was the wisdom and couldn't feel it. And that whole talk about some wisdoms can't hear the wind and fake it Mm -hmm. is Nynaeve because... Like she's a faker? Like she's a faker because otherwise Maureen would have been able to feel it and she would have known, right? Or she did feel it and she did know. And when you told me that thing, you pointed out the child thing. Now... I'm thinking otherwise. It I'm thinking it's the there. opposite of what I originally thought. It all connects. She knows Nynaeve also has this power. Yeah. Which is interesting that she like left her behind and she was also going to leave Egwene behind. Yeah. But she says Egwene needs the training and needs help. So it's like, but she was just going to leave her there. But we also know that Maureen and Lan came into town at a very opportune time. Yeah. They had a plan to be back across the Terran River. They had a like little cubby hole cut out. Yeah. That may or may not be completely natural. Doesn't look completely natural to be yeah. fair. Like they had a plan going in and coming out. So if you go in with a plan, she wasn't accounting to find two uh, potentially or even one necessarily. Potentially. She yeah. came there for a reason. Yeah. So Okay. Well, I guess it's just good. And then I was thinking, well, maybe she sort of... Because Lan seems like a put-together guy. 
<laughs> and he is sneaky and he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And it's one thing for Egwene to have noticed Matt and Perrin sort of sneaking around. But it's another for her to have noticed Lan doing something. So maybe that was put in place so that Egwene would see it and would want to come along. Yeah, it's very possible. Yeah. Lan seems like the kind of guy, if, if he doesn't want you to see him, yeah, he, then, you're not going to see right. him. Right, and so if Moraine gave him instructions for Egwene to see him doing something... Yeah, make sure she sees you. Yeah, I could see that totally happening. And if she's clever enough, she can come. <laughs> yes, yeah, maybe. It's yeah. like a test. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like answer the riddles three. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, okay, anyways, here, Moraine tells Egwene here that she is close to her change. Yes. And her first touching. Yeah, this has a very uh, puberty feel to it. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And so Moraine is sort of like, I'll take you under my wing. I'll help you through it. If you don't have anywhere in the one there to guide you, it, it's going it to be unpleasant. It can be terrible. Yeah. So Moraine takes out this sort of blue gem from her pouch. And I think it's the one that she was wearing on her head Yeah, that's, that's the exact one it is. Okay. Yeah. And she tells Egwene that she will guide her through it. Because apparently this will avoid any unpleasant effects that come to those without any help. Yeah. So if you like try and do it yourself, some of the repercussions are you die. Right. Yeah. And so Egwene here is just like, holy shit, does that thing have the power? Like talking about the stone. (laughs) Yeah. And then Maureen loses her cool. A little bit. For a split second. And says like, no stupid girl. Of course not. Things don't have the power. Even an angry all is only a tool. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good point to have. Okay, and then she so, speaks a little more softly, and is like, "Okay, you don't know." Yeah. Sorry. Right. Right. Let you me. You know, explain. Maureen actually she's stressed. Like yeah. she's been under extreme. <laughs> She's had to do a lot more than she probably yeah. thought she was going to have to. But then she says, okay, so this thing doesn't have its own power, but it does give off light. So here, she gives it to Egwene mm-hmm. and says, here, look at the stone, clear your mind, and drift. I will help you. And this reminds me of the void. Excellent. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to connect those dots. It doesn't sound the same, but it no, sounds similar. It's very similar. It's like the same thing, but explained in a different way. And do you remember your prediction when you talked about that? About how um, Rand was going to use the Flame and Void to channel. You did make that prediction. I literally said that in like yeah. our first episode. You did. That's so I had funny. To, yeah. And we kind of get a confirmation here that at least... That's what Egwene's going to do. Something similar. Yeah. Yeah. I almost lost my shit when you said that. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. And I didn't want to give anything away. Like, oh, yeah, that 100% sounds kind of familiar exactly here. Exactly so, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, it definitely sounds very similar to what Egwene's going to have to do. Okay. Yeah. So, clear your mind. Drift. Don't think of anything. Just drift, she yeah. keeps saying. And this is sort of like a rather intimate moment here to be doing in front of everyone. And it's like, I can't believe this is happening right now. Yeah, right now. Right now, crazy. And Moraine doesn't, you know, we've been told this over and over and over again. I said I do things for their own reasons. Yeah. And I think there's a reason right now she's doing this in front of everybody. That's a very good point. I think that she wants everybody to see that Egwene can do this. Because if they do it sort of secretly secluded alone, and Egwene tries to explain to these country bumpkins... Yeah. What's going on and what she's going through, they won't get it and they won't believe her and they won't understand. And that's going to be really difficult for Egwene because she's going to probably be, like berate her for Yeah, it too. and she's probably and then maybe tear her down and maybe she won't want to try again. Yeah. So, I think that Moraine has a really good instinct here to do this in front of everybody. Yeah. I think it's an always safe assumption that Maureen and Lan are doing everything they do for a reason. Yes. Even the whole good cop bad cop thing? Yeah, oh yeah. Like the snapping and the it's okay, Lan, and Lan getting pissed. Like, it's all... Yeah, it's all part of it. It's all part of it. So, Ran's fingers here actually dig into his knees, and his jaws clench, and he thinks to himself, fail, fail, she has to fail. Like, he really doesn't want her to have anything to do with this magic. Yeah. Magic is just bad news bears for these guys, and doesn't want her to have anything to do with this. So, just then, though, light flashes from the stone, one flash and then gone, but then there's a couple more flashes and Ran just tries to convince himself that it's all Moraine doing it and not Egwene. So Egwene's a little bit disappointed though because the light sort of flickers and then goes out. Yeah. And she thinks that she should have done better or something and she says, perhaps you're wrong about me. 
Sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> it's like, okay, Egwene. So there's a little bit of self, you know. Deprecating. Deprecation, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. And she goes, I have wasted nothing, child. Calls her child again. Yeah. And are we to assume that maybe before they have their, quote, change? Sure. They get to be called a child. Child. And then when they have whatever, then they're not. When you, like, get more powerful, then you're you no get longer your a child. Sedai name. That would make a lot of sense why she called Nynaeve child. Right, it's like that you're not pissed a Ni- Nynaeve right off. Yeah, that because was you bad. don't know who Ni- Nynaeve is. Yeah. But she could have done that like out of, you know, just she calls every woman she's ever met who's not a nice to die who can channel. Child. Child. Maybe. Maybe. But Moraine here has a little small smile of satisfaction and she says that last light was yours alone. And Egwene can't believe it. It was. And then she slides immediately back into glumness. <laughs> But it was barely there at all. So berates herself like, this is your first time ever doing this and you got a little something. So that was pretty good. So she says, now you're behaving like a foolish village girl. And then goes on to explain to her that most who go to Tarvalon to study, they have to study for many, many months before you do what she just did. Yeah. So that's the whole natural talent coming into play here because you can be learned, but Egwene won't have to learn. She's going to do it regardless. Yes, so. and she says you may go far, perhaps even the Amarlin seat one yeah. day, if you study hard and work hard. <laughs> that's like top of the food chain yeah, there. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. And she says, you mean, and she throws her arms around the Aes Sedai, gives her a big hug. Oh, thank you. And she goes, Rand, did you hear? I'm going to be an Aes Sedai. Oh, and then Rand's just ecstatic, and he's so happy he can't for her. wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that all happens after that. You just, you know, as we long as We just don't you, see it yet. Yeah, we don't see it. End of chapter. But Rand's super happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the end of this chapter. Yeah. And that'll wrap up this episode. So any last thoughts for me on what we learned here today? I think that was pretty in depth. We covered quite a bit. Yeah, we got a huge amount of information on exactly how channeling works in this universe. We got a lot of information about the women, but we also got some information about the men too. Yes. Yeah. So M- Maureen kind of highlighted a few things into the conversation with Egwene about how the men's side works too. Right, but I don't think she did that by accident with the men sitting there listening. Okay. I don't think she does anything by accident. Yeah, we like I said, yeah, talked we just about talked about, about it. Safe to assume everything Maureen does is done for a reason. Yes. So coming back to that whole Bella thing, yeah. we know Egwene has the ability to channel. Yes. It kind of might tie into your theory there a little bit. Yeah. I guess Maybe. we're going to have to read and find out. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. excited. The next chapter is called Choices. And we get another map. Oh, yeah, we do. But yeah. I guess we'll talk about that next. Yeah, we'll talk about that afterwards uh, when we go into the next chapter. Yeah, but and we obviously get we get a... a new map because we're moving on to yeah. a new, we're like out of the two rivers. Yeah, officially, almost. Almost. <laughs> officially, almost. <laughs> almost officially out of the two rivers. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting chapter uh, called Choices because yeah. who's going to have to make some choices? Yeah interesting i'm excited okay all right thanks for my wheel of times therapy session that was fun lots of fun thanks for listening to this episode of the wheel weaves please feel free to rate comment and subscribe it would really mean a lot to us and does actually make a really big difference tell your friends or anyone who might like us or anyone who's thinking of getting into the series who might want to follow along with us You can find us on social media. There's more information on there and some fun pictures and tidbits on Instagram at the Wheel Weaves Podcast or on Twitter at the Wheel Weaves Podcast. If you'd like bonus content, exclusive insider looks, and to support us making great content, you can find us on patreon.com slash the Wheel Weaves Podcast. Thanks, as always, to audionautics.com for the music, and thanks to you awesome listeners.